Hi guys, my name's Laura and I'm the Specky Seamstress. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about what my best tips are for beginners sewing. And this video was requested by you guys. So when I put out my call for questions for my Q&A vlog, the most common question I was asked was, you know, like, how do you get started? What are your best tips for beginners? And I mentioned in a couple of vlogs that I thought this was such a great question, but such a kind of personal question because everybody's sewing journey has been totally different and so I've got together with some amazing sewing vloggers to bring you kind of a wide view of what your best tips are for beginners and um, so keep an eye out for that coming up over the next six weeks or so on a number of channels I'll be linking them um, into a playlist and I'll be um, popping up on Instagram with links to them as well so do keep an eye out for that. But I've really been thinking about this and I did want to give it the time it deserved. So I've got 10 top tips here and throughout that I'm going to kind of be talking a little bit about my sewing journey as well and how I got started and how I've made it <laughs> such a strong hobby um, for me now. Strong in the sense I really love it, not in the fact I'm really good. <laughs> also, I've mentioned in um, a couple of vlogs in the sewing activities for when you're short of time, energy or motivation um, series that this is also a really good kind of set of things to just think about if you haven't been in the mood for sewing for a little while or you've been struggling with your sojo or your energy levels or you've just had a break from sewing for whatever reason to kind of get you back into the swing of garment sewing as well. So keep watching for more of that. <laughs> I'm not very good at those segues, am I? Um, so my number one tip is sew something you really want to. And this kind of boils down to really thinking about your style. I think a lot of people, when they first start sewing, they sew fitted bodice, flared skirt, 50 style dresses in like quilting cotton um, because it's readily available there's lots of fun prints and it's kind of the thing that I think a lot of people start with but it isn't actually that many people's style so have a think about what you actually want to make um, is it a shirt <laughs> is that what you struggle to fit in your kind of ready to wear wardrobe and I think that there's lots of motivations for why people sew and if your sewing motivation is because you struggle to find things certain things that fit you um, in the shops then really think about what those things are and try and work up to that try and always have that in mind because I think it is very easy to fall into the kind of rabbit hole of pretty prints and um yeah like floaty dresses and party dresses when actually I mean, maybe you guys are all way more social than me, but I don't have many parties to go to and I don't need that many party dresses in my life. Um, and don't get me wrong, you can wear posh floaty dresses whenever you want and it's not like you can only wear them to parties. But do you think it's important to think about your style or your ambition for your style and really pick something that you actually want to sew? Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be able to make that as your very first garment. You know, I've kind of the next... Thing that I've put is don't be afraid be bold but then number three is but don't be over ambitious now that's a bit of a difficult line to walk and I think you learn it as you go along and um, kind of what I'm saying here is think about something that's reasonably simple that you would still wear and um, because actually wearing your makes which is number four I'm whizzing through these <laughs> wear your makes with pride um, it doesn't have to be perfect to be wearable, is for me, what was for me a really big motivator in actually carrying on sewing, actually wearing stuff, wearing it to work and wearing it out with friends made a big difference in my motivation because I have, I've said very openly that I have tried dressmaking several times before in my life and never really, it never really stuck and I found it really hard to stay kind of inspired by it because I made lots of mistakes and things didn't fit me very well. But actually making things that just were a little bit more my style and even though they weren't perfect and even though the fit wasn't perfect, wearing them out and about really made a difference this time round, which is when I started um, dressmaking again in summer 2018. And 
I mean, when I say started dressmaking again, I had constructed some garments before, but I would never have said, I don't think any of them ever saw the light of day outside of my house. They weren't really, I, I wouldn't call myself a dressmaker, certainly before that. Um, so yeah, so something you really want to. Now, when I say don't be afraid, be bold, I really mean that. You do have to be a bit ambitious because you're new and you're learning something and it's okay that you don't know everything yet because otherwise you wouldn't be new and you wouldn't be a beginner so don't be afraid to be a bit bold and make things now if your style is that you really like sewing with knits so like or you like wearing knits so uh, jersey fabric stretchy clothes then a lot of people say or oh, you learn to sew with wovens and you should make things with woven first and be comfortable and lots of people get really scared of sewing with jersey when actually it's nowhere near as scary as you think it's going to be and don't be put off by that if people have been scared of sewing with jersey for a long time it doesn't mean that you should be and have the confidence to give it a go and learn from your mistakes but don't be too over ambitious now what i mean by that is it's probably not worth your very first um, make being a lined leather jacket with 25 zips in it and um you know difficult things to do just pick some things that are reasonably simple now they can have difficult techniques in them that's fine the the best way i've kind of thought about it is when i first made my Grain, la grain line grain line studios cascade duffel coat they say that the coat is an advanced make and they say in it it isn't advanced because the techniques in it are particularly challenging but there are a lot of steps it can be tricky to keep up your concentration and your skill for that long if you're new to this so that's quite a good way of looking at it you know you could do something with zips or with a jersey fabric or lined or whatever but try not to do one that's got all of them <laughs> because actually like tackling one or two new skills at a time is probably the best way to go and i've put underneath that it's all about knowing your own style of learning in the past when i had tried to learn dressmaking before i was like i will learn one thing at a time and you know i got bored because <laughs> actually i wanted to tackle a few things and see how it went and maybe fail a couple of times and then sort of go from there so it is kind of a little bit about knowing your own style of learning you know if you are the sort of person that wants to learn a skill and then excel at it and really really master it before you move on to the next one then that's what you should do <laughs> but if you're the sort of person who likes to try lots of new things and sort of learn as you go and um you know you're okay with that then do that now that's hard if you've never done a skill like this before because you might not know what your learning style is but there's only one way to find out and that is to just give it a go and that links up with don't be afraid you know just give something a go what's the worst that can happen you know if you're not using really expensive fabric which is number six so i'll come back to that <laughs> what is the worst that can go wrong um number five is be prepared to make mistakes you're gonna make mistakes everybody makes mistakes even the people that make all of their wardrobe <laughs> and all of their new clothes and don't buy anything from anywhere um they make mistakes you've kind of got to accept that when you're learning something new and when you're doing any skill you're going to make mistakes sometimes but the more you do it and the more you practice and the more you learn and the more you read about it the the best advice <laughs> I've ever had from that is my dad so I play cricket and my dad told me when I was learning and um, you'll always make mistakes you'll always bowl a bad ball but your the bad balls will get less bad and they'll get less frequent and I think that I try and keep that in my mind for any skill your mistakes will get less major and less frequent as you learn and as you progress so be prepared to make mistakes make peace with it <laughs> um because you probably will but look not all mistakes mean that that garment has been a complete waste of time in fact no mistake means that but not all mistakes mean that you have to bin it you know most mistakes you can fix or you can wear anyway and no one else will notice it no one one thing you'll realize when you're when you're sewing is that you start to notice 
everyone else's clothes more or at least i hope you do i hope that's not just me being a bit of a weirdo um but i notice what people are wearing and i notice how many things i put up with in the past in my ready to wear shop bought wardrobe and how many things we don't even think about so don't panic about mistakes they're unlikely to be noticed so I said number six was buy cheap or I didn't actually say that but I sort of hinted it <laughs> so I bought lots of duvet covers when I first started learning to sew and I bought lots of quilting cottons which is totally fine as well you can get lots of really good affordable fabrics you can thrift stuff or go to charity shops or op shops or whatever you call them wherever you are in the world and pick up bedding or fabrics or curtains you know there's lots of ways to get cheap fabric when you're learning and that still is nice and still is wearable I mean for the first four or five months six months maybe of me sewing I pretty much only sewed with um duvet covers and I wore all of the dresses and all of the things that I made with them um, I've also sewn a lot with African wax, which I've talk talked about um, quite a bit on this channel. And African wax is a really good way of getting some quite bold <laughs> fabric, really beautiful fabric, for not a lot of money. Um, you can buy African wax in by, by the bolt in lots of markets for, for £10 for six yards. And that's a lot of fabric to play around with there. And if you make a mistake and it does go wrong and you're trying something new and it doesn't work for whatever reason you've probably got enough to make another one <laughs> which is quite nice because you know I know what it's like it's not very nice if you're worried about mucking up a fabric and you're worried because you really really like the print of it even if it was cheap um so that's quite a good way of doing that or you know if you are buying reasonably cheap and you're buying from a shop rather than like an op shop or a charity shop or something buy a bit more of it <laughs> if you are worried about it going wrong you know have a little bit of leeway with it um i'm terrible for that because i'm a proper bargain hunter and i'm a bit of a cheapskate but <laughs> um it is a really sensible thing to do if you're worried about that um so that's number six number seven is if you are really worried about ruining fabric and you really really can't get over it i mean go back to number two don't be afraid be bold <laughs> i believe in you um but if you are really really nervous and you can't overcome that why not try upcycling or altering something first you know if you've got something in your wardrobe that you'd much prefer to be a bit shorter or you need to take the side seams in a little bit or you want to alter the neckline on it or something have a think about if there's something you can do like that that will get you kind of feeling confident and will kind of give you almost a whole new garment without having to construct a whole new garment and um, so I think that's a really good way of getting into sewing um without it being kind of too much of a step in the in the skill direction so have a think about that and I did that I mean I was kind of upcycling and altering clothing quite a long time before I would have called myself a dressmaker and like from a teenager and to the point where I probably ruined things that my parents probably spent money on but you know <laughs> the point stands that it gives you a chance to think about what you like and what you don't like and um yeah just play around with clothing and fabrics that that's, that's really useful um number eight which I can't find in my list ah uh, number eight is um don't think about the numbers now accurate measurements are far more important than the size on the packet <laughs> um I've learned this the hard way when I started dressmaking I was not very positive about my body shape at all I lied to myself about the measurements I was taking and that's not doing anyone any favors because it just means you're going to make something that doesn't fit you which will make you feel worse about your sewing worse about your body and it doesn't yeah help you at all so take measurements accurately nobody has to see them if you don't want to tell them the number you don't have to tell anyone what size you've made if you don't want to but also if you have clothes that fit you well you will feel better about your body you will and I know that I've said quite a lot in the past on this vlog that I really want to do a little vlog 
it's probably series to be honest but at least one vlog talking about body positivity and sewing for me um because my body image and my sewing journey are really interlinked but i have tried to film it a couple of times and been like found myself getting emotional about it and then not really knowing what i'm trying to say and portray to you guys so i am gonna have to think about it i think that i'd like to do that for my one year on youtube um anniversary special because i'm probably gonna put out three or four videos that week including the first ever video i released that got deleted from youtube so um i'd like to put up that and I think it would be a really good one. But yeah, body body image and sewing are really interlinked for me. And I think they are for lots of people. So just be honest with your tape measure. <laughs> and know that it will be better for your wardrobe in the long run. Um, moving on to number nine is get inspired by everything around you and find your community. Now, the fact that you guys are already watching YouTube about sewing means that you're listening to people and finding out about stuff in the sewing community. Now, the sewing community online is what like vast <laughs> there are so many ways of interacting with the sewing community online through reading blogs through watching vlogs there are tutorials out there which are great if that's the way that you want to learn you know i think that this time round for me one of the other reasons that it stuck is because there was so much resource out there for me to go to and find information out when i was stuck because the challenge I had was not getting started, it was getting restarted once I'd got stuck and made a mistake and couldn't fix it. Um, so actually reading tutorials, going and finding um, pattern reviews and sew-alongs was so valuable for me. And it helped me find the community that I like. Yeah, like find the community that builds you up and inspire you to sew and give you the skills and knowledge and excitement about making a me made wardrobe <laughs> um and don't make you feel bad about it you know i i said at the start so something you really want to sew and know your style also know why you want to sew and you don't have to do this straight away before you ever make one garment but like as you're learning think about you know do you want to sew because you don't want to buy any morning clothes cool that's great like find things that suit you for all of the garments that you need or do you want to sew just because you want to make pretty party dresses for yourself in a fun print that you can't find in the shops and actually you're quite happy buying everything else from the shops and will that change as you sew maybe i mean it has for me i didn't think that i'd be making pants and bras certainly um but i am and i'm enjoying it and so kind of be aware of that as you start your sewing journey because the online community in sewing is fast and is amazing and it's full of wonderful people who are really kind and happy to help and full of inspiration um but it can be quite overwhelming and if you you know you don't want to be made to feel guilty because you're still buying jeans or you're still buying um plain black t-shirts or whatever because they don't inspire you um when you're sewing and i think you know find your community for that <laughs> and make sure that you're in a community that really does kind of inspire you so that's my number nine. Number 10 is don't be afraid to ask for help and don't be afraid to share your learnings. And that can be through mistakes or successes. The sewing community really is one of the most welcoming communities that I've been part of. And um, sharing your mistakes is really valid and asking for help, honestly, I asked for help twice really early on in my sewing journey, particularly like my online presence sewing journey. Um, I asked for help from Ashley, who is Ashley Ellen on Instagram. And she's starting a YouTube channel this year, which I'm super excited about because she ran a challenge really early on when I was sewing that I won, which was very exciting. Um, and I asked her for help and guidance on a fabric choice. And then I also asked um, Jo, who is uh, a meter of on Instagram, but she also runs Pipe Dream Patterns. And I just reached out to her completely out of the blue for help on a neckline fitting issue that I had. And she gave me the time and helped me 
and I am so grateful for that <laughs> because it made me want to keep posting and sharing and being part of that community online and do ask for help because people will help um, or they'll point you in the direction of someone who can help. Some of you guys have asked me questions that I do not know the answer to but I really do try and point you in the direction of someone who can help you out if you need it. So they are my top 10 um, tips for beginners or getting back to basics or getting back into your sojo I guess. Um, I have really enjoyed thinking about these things and yeah really, really loved it. Um, just to give you a little bit more on like my sewing journey. So I said I've tried dressmaking a couple of times in the past and never really had much success. I learned to sew at school um, so I knew how to use a machine and I didn't know anything about fitting or really garment construction but I knew how to read a pattern and I knew how to sew and I had a sewing machine because from one of my previous attempts to learn to dress make that didn't last very long at all and when um, me and my husband moved house in September 2017 we um, were planning our wedding and we were having a party at our house and we needed to have lots of seats <laughs> because we all of a sudden had way more people coming to our house than the you know usual two to four people that were in in the property so I got the sewing machine out and I made up some cushions to go on some um, different seating around the house and then I sort of said to Nick oh I think I might keep my sewing machine out actually and try a few other bits and pieces and then I um shortly before we got married I uh, handed in my resignation at my job I were, was working in London and I didn't like the commute that I had so I moved jobs and I moved jobs shortly after we we got married uh, to a job that was much more local and I said to Nick you know I think I'm gonna learn to sew with the extra time I have um the move in job saved me something like eight to ten hours a week on my commute and i put that into sewing and I loved it so uh, you know maybe one of my other tips maybe number 11 is kind of appreciate that it's going to take some time and if you want to be really good at it you need to dedicate a bit of time to it but that also everybody's sewing journey is totally different and you know you can do you can learn to sew in really short bursts or you can really dedicate time and 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 yeah your sewing journey will just be different to everybody else's so don't compare yourself and I think that kind of links back to like know your community and don't, try not to get overwhelmed by by the community that's out there um everybody is different and that's kind of why I didn't want to do this vlog just by myself because I think actually the benefit of this community is that everybody is different and everybody's journey has been different and actually we should find out about that and hear lots of different people's views and see what resonates with us so on that note i am gonna leave you here and i'm going to um pop a link to the playlist down in the description and let you guys know over the next couple of vlogs who's been taking part but thank you so much for watching and thanks for um letting me know that this is a vlog you wanted to hear about I would absolutely love to know if there's other vlogs you'd like me to do. Um, I know that several of you are interested in me doing sew alongs, but I'm a little bit nervous about sew alongs because I can't, I don't think I can really teach because <laughs> I don't think I'm good enough to teach and I don't know what you want to see from it. So let me know if you're interested in a sew along, what do you actually want to see? Like, what do you want me to be doing while, while we're sewing along <laughs> together? Anyway, thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye!